Psalm 119. Verse 68. 1968. We are reading two Bible passages. One from the Old Testament, one from the New Testament. Are we there? Psalm 119. Verse 68. This is the psalm is talking about goodness of God. So thou art good. And does good teach me the status. Another version says, You are good, and do what is good. Teach me your status. Let's go to Acts of Apostle, chapter 14, verse 17. This is Paul and Barnabas and Lystra. <laughs> the man that was crippled from his mother's womb was healed. He was impotent in his feet. And the people at Lystra, they thought that these are gods that have come today. And then God gave them the inspiration to talk about the Lord Jesus Christ today. And this is what told the people at Lystra. Verse 17. Nevertheless, he left, up, left not himself without witness. In that, he did what? He did good. And gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Praise the Lord. Amen. The message is simply the goodness of God. Why the month of God's goodness? The month of March for us in this family is the month of what? God's God's what? God's goodness. And we have read that text. Psalm 119 68 that himself is good. And it does what is good. The psalmist said, teach me my status. And we can hear Acts 14, 17, what Paul said. But the Lord, he has not left us without any witness that he did good. So I want you to prepare your mind that today you are receiving more of the goodness of God into your lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. You, see, you are receiving more of God's goodness into your life today in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to sing a song. It's a new song. I don't know how many of us know this song by Henry Baker. The King of Love, my shepherd is. Maybe brother Colin will know the song. Whose goodness fill it never I not in life if I am his, and he is mine forever. I will sing it. We have to learn new song every day. The King of Love, my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. Fastest for singing. The King of Love, my shepherd is, whose goodness is and never. I know
We thank you in this family for you are a great God. We could recollect what has happened last week. You kept us safe by your mighty heart. King of glory. Father of every creation. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going into your world. We have read that you are good. And you do good today. We want to see your goodness. We want to have experience of that goodness in that our situation. It shall be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Your goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of the heart of your people be acceptable unto you. Our God and our Redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord here a round of applause. The goodness of God. In the scripture, which we are not going to read all, that is in Matthew 20. By the time that we read from verse 1 to verse 16, Jesus gave a parable. <laughs> that there was a man who was a very big farm. And he went out to get the laborers to come and walk. He hired the first one. And that one started walking. That was shortly before now. He went out 9 again, 9 a.m. He saw some. What are you doing here? We are still waiting for someone to hire us. Go to my farm. And I will give you whatever I would like to give you. The first one he called before 9 o'clock, he agreed. That is the power of agreement. It's a covenant. I'm going to give you a penny. Will you be able to do this? He said, yes. Cool. That is a day's job. A day's job. A fit. So he went again. Twelve noon. He saw some. What are you there? No one want to hire us. He said, okay, go to my farm. I will give you whatever I like. When it was 3 p.m. again, he went. And he says also, why are you hiding here? He says, we don't want to give us any job. Go to my farm. Then 5 p.m. Because the closing period is 6. So he saw another one. 5 p.m. What are you doing? I don't want to hire me. Go to my farm. I work. I will give you whatever I like. So at the end of the day, The man that hired the laborers asked them to kill. So he said, the last one that came should come to the front. <laughs> so others just follow. According to the time you came. So he gave the last person that just worked for one hour, one penny. This is it. The second group that came, three pair, one penny. So he gave them one penny. And the first man that came before nine o'clock, he gave him what? One penny. Ah -ah. Then the man said, why, why, why are you doing this? This is some fear. We came, we were toiling in the sun this morning. And you are giving all of us the same amount. This was uh, the farm owner now said, Look, what is your business with what I give to others? How would I agree with you that I will give you one penny? He said, yes. So he said, because of my goodness, let's look at the first 15. 
That Matthew 20, verse 15. So, because of my goodness, to give my money to the way I like. Is that your own business? Is it the kingdom of heaven? The country man. Is it not lawful? Look, I see. For me to do what I will with my own. Is that I evil? Because I am good. Praise the Lord. Amen. So before honor wanted to do something special. He wanted to do something unexpected. So that those lepros, they will kill him. And they will tell their wives, come and see the wonders that I received. Come and see what has happened. I walked us for one hour and I was given a whole day money. I walked for two hours. I was given a whole day money. Second story goes like this. In 2002, a brother called Dennis, at one of the highest institutions in Indonesia, is in Look at my life, can you see what God has done? Look around, see the beauty of his work. He went to the class. That was the final exam. <laughs> So they met the other students in the class, they were revised and cramming everything that they could cram. Then the examiner, the professor, he just came in with the exam questions. And he did little review with them. And he told them that most of the answers you must have known them because I taught you. But he told them, he said, there will be a song that you might not have heard before, but they are in your textbooks. So, how the students say, hey, what, what's going to happen? So, the man said, the professor said, okay, I'll give you the, 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 the question papers. Now, whatever you write there is your responsibility. And this brother, when he got the exam question, it was a fill in. But the paper had already been filled in, all the answers came. And even at the bottom of the paper, the name of this man was put there, the student. It wasn't him alone. That was what happened to all other students. So they started looking at themselves. What was going on? So at the end of the exam, because no one, uh, no one could write anything. Answers already written. So the professor came. <laughs> Can I have your scripts? And he said, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the exam you have drawn, the creator of the test took the exam for you. So it wasn't what you have read that has made you to pass. All of you are going to get A. That is what we call undeserved A. Aha. He said, so, you are all going to pass. That is the end of the exam. You cannot imagine. The students, whether they were good or bad, whether they were Christians or no Christians, they all got undeserved A's. I know someone is getting undeserved A here in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I've told you this before. The sister, a medical student, God told her, 
You are not going to pass your exam for what you have read, but God will pass you. Ah! And that exam was so tough. It was a viper. Patients will be there. You just go in, and the professor will be watching you. All the students that have gone before this system, as soon as they come out, the professor will tell you, you have failed. You, you have failed. Ah! So it was the turn of this system. For 15 minutes, the sister didn't know what to do. Because what is she going to do? So when it was about uh, three minutes to go, he held the hand of the patient. He, she was looking at her time, that three minutes. The professor said, you have passed. She didn't know what she has done that had made her to pass. He said, you have passed, you have passed. Hey. So the prof told her, when you are first of all, you see a patient, the process of clacking that is asking question is first of all to take the bus. But the sister was not taking any bus. She was just holding her hand in that angle of the patient. Supernatural promotion will be your Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are not going to fail in all areas of your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. The same thing happened to me so many years ago. I was doing a professional exam here in London, King's College, orthopedic program. The condition is that the lecturer should not tell students whether they have passed or not. There were external examiners. So I got to the cubicle where the, the man was. I did everything. The woman looked at me. She said, Michael, where are all other examiners? I've got a problem with you, but I have passed you. You have passed. So the woman now, she didn't follow the rule. All what that I am telling you has to do with goodness of God. Not because we are good. Don't let the choir sing this song. Not because we come to the church every day. You can imagine those lepers. Maybe some of them were pagans. But they were given the same amount. Look at those students in the exam. Maybe some of them were not Christians, but they all got on the sad A. So this, this afternoon, I know no one here will say he or she has never experienced the great kindness of God upon your life before. No one can deny that. No one can deny that you have not experienced the expected, undeserved, lavish kindness of God upon your lives. Even coming here today is as a result of the goodness of the Lord. What happened throughout last week that God kept us alive was as a result of goodness of the Lord. I pray that God will continue to be good to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tell your neighbor, my God is good to me. Tell your neighbor, my God is good to me. Whatever I am passing through, my God is good to me. Praise the Lord. So, if you want to see God for who He really is, of course, there are a lot of passages, especially in the Psalms, that talk about the goodness of God. The first chronicle. 1634. It says, Give thanks to the Lord for his word, for he is good. I love Psalm 136. Nearly every night I read it. I read Psalm 136 first one. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. By the time you go through that psalm, you will see what the psalm is brought about the way God delivered them, about the way God fought for them, about the way God destroyed the firstborn in the land of Egypt and saved the children of Israel 
about the way God destroyed the king of Persia, the king of Ox, and the way God opened the Red Sea and for them to pass through, and that Red Sea covered their enemies. In fact, by the time you go through it, you will see that truly God is good. He will continue to be good unto you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 34, verse 8, all this and say that God, His word is good. You will continue to be tasting the goodness of the Lord all the days of your life in Jesus' name. So what is the meaning of goodness of God? Because when I'm talking, what is the meaning of goodness of God? Goodness of God is the core of our Christian faith. If we do not know or if we still have concern that God is good, we wouldn't be here today. But we know that God is good and He doeth good things. That is why we are here. God is essentially goodness in Himself. And let me tell you something. He has a monopoly of goodness. <laughs> you know, you know the meaning of that. He is the only one that is good. He has a monopoly of goodness. No man, no any woman is good. When well, Jesus Christ, he, he, he was approached by that young brother, that good teacher. He said, there's no one that is good except God. He was telling him, not that Jesus Christ was not good. But Jesus Christ is not good. Jesus Christ was telling him that, look, don't talk about good teacher. The only person that is good is God. And here I am, the express image of God, God the Son. And that is why I am good, not as a teacher. Praise the Lord. Amen. So when we talk about goodness of God, there is no any additional or subtraction from it that we can make him good. He is an embodiment of goodness. He is goodness himself. It's just a sun. Sun has got light. And it sheds the light to people. So the same thing with God, because God is goodness in Himself. He now spread the goodness to all His creatures. Praise the Lord. Amen. So as that Psalm 34 has told us, taste and see that the Lord is good. God is an ocean of goodness without bounds and no bottom. That's the same. It's an ocean of goodness without any bounds or no bottom. So his whole being is what we call goodness. He's the author, the originator, the foundation of goodness. And so when we talk about goodness, it has to do with God. We can have traits, we human beings, and deeds of goodness. But let me tell you, oh, that good was food. Oh, that's a good friend. Oh, that's a good meal. No. One way or the other, those things that we are calling good are being tempted. There will be one excuse on the other for what we call good outside God. So Psalm 119 has given us the definition of good, of God's goodness. It has two components. The first component is the nature and character of God is goodness. The second aspect is what it does with that goodness. It sent goodness to people. Because he himself, that is what that was someone my name, Pastor says, says, You are good and you do good. Teach me your statutes. 
The Lord will teach us how to be good in life in the name of Jesus. Some friends could be good, but still they are imperfect. Spouse could be good, but still imperfect. Food could be good, but you discover that this food has got this problem. But the only one that hasn't got any taint, the only one that is perfect, is our God. So the character of God is this. It's morally good. It's indescribably good. It's experimentally good. In all ramifications, he is good. Indisputably good. When you look at him, inside, outside, you find goodness in him. Immutably good. So no more can say, this God is no good. It's perfectly good. And I pray, he's going to show you his token of goodness upon your lives in the name of Jesus. Then what action do we call God that is good? When we look at the blessings upon us, when we look at kindness upon us, when we look at his mercy upon us, when we look at those oh, those kind of goodness that we do not merit, we will say, oh truly, God is good. We pass our exams. In our offices, God has been exalting us. In our environment, God has been protecting us. And that is all about His goodness. When we ask Him, He answers us. It's about His goodness. <laughs> I don't know if you have ever thought of God as being generous towards you. That is what we have to be looking at. With all our complaint, with all our baggage, with all our issues, we should know that God is good to us. That undeserved goodness of God will be our portion today in the name of Jesus. He is the one said, I cannot wait. I have to pour my goodness upon you so that you will know that I am your God. And he is doing that right now in the life of everyone here. And he's going to do that permanently in Jesus' name. Amen. Some of us will say, what is the pastor saying? Even with this trial that I am undergoing, even with these issues facing me, before you are going to put God in a witness box, <laughs> I have to quickly tell you how God reveals his goodness to people. Channels by which God broadcasts his goodness to us. That is the proof. Because some of us that are scientists, we want empirical evidence. Is that not what we say? Ah, ah, no evidence. But then that is not proof, not QED. But now, we have the proofs. The way God bestowed his goodness upon us. One, when we look at his creations, his accomplishments, and it's what we call common grace. We have spoken about common grace. Yes. Genesis 1 31. God did something. He looked at all this world. God saw all that he had made. And it was what? Very good. Tell your neighbor. And fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Praise the Lord. I can't say anyone that is ugly here. We are very handsome and we are very beautiful. So that is the work of God because our God is good. It's an embodiment of goodness. And let me tell you, God, just like that, 
now with vineyard. Jesus said something in Matthew 5.45. You cannot imagine about this goodness. You might be thinking that oh, the goodness is only for me. Yes, you have the right to have the goodness of God as, it, as children of God. But let me tell you, God is so good to everyone. That is the key word. And this is what Jesus Christ said about the goodness of God. He said, He causes His Son to rise upon who? On the evil and what of the rain? On the just and unjust, the right and unrighteous. That is God. That is how good our God is. So when rain is falling, it will be falling on just the righteous people alone. It's falling over everyone. That is his goodness. Psalm 145. When we look at verses 15 to 16, it says, All eyes look up unto you to give them their food in due time. And what happens? And God opened his heart and satisfied. All the names of the living thing. When God satisfies the desire of every living thing, you can imagine. So why you see the animals, you see the plants, they are living things. You see human beings. God satisfies their own desire. That is how good our God is. So if God can do that, then why are you doubting God? That I don't think God is good to me. He will be good to you more and more in the name of Jesus. Yeah. When you look around you, you look at the beautiful flowers, you look at the sea, you look at the ocean, you look, you look at animals, you, you, you look at what God has done for you in your life. Then you will say that God is good to me. And I pray that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. The second one is kind supernatural interventions. When we look at Psalm 107, verses 1 and 2, it says, Give thanks to the Lord. Very simple. For His good is faithful love and thus forever. So let the redeemer of the Lord proclaim that has redeemed them from the hand of their enemy. Hey, God has been fighting our battles for us. Both seen and unseen battles. Both physical and spiritual battles. And when we know that according to the psalmist, that is the one that has redeemed us from the act of our enemy, then we say, God, you are good to me. Some people when they sleep, they don't wake up the following morning. I think you know that. But God has made it possible for us because it's the eyes that neither sleep nor slumber. He keeps watching over us. 24 hours. And that is why I always tell people, please, you better be running away from sin because the eyes of the Lord are you watching your movement, keeping out you, keeping you safe. And I pray his eyes will continuously be upon our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Psalm 86. See what he said in verse 5. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto them that call upon them. So, part of the goodness of God is to forgive us, to break the chains of sin in our lives, and to bring us back into His ways. Because sometimes we make errors, we make decisions outside God's decision. And that is an error. But God, as soon as we know that, we say, God, please forgive me. And the same is said, He's trying to deliver us from every distresses. He's going to bring us back to the pathway of righteousness in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that our nights shall be turned to this in Jesus' name. Amen. So when, when we talk about that supernatural intervention, it's just about His goodness. Not that we can pray very well. Not that we can fast very well. Not that we come to the Bible study very well. But that doesn't mean that our pastor said that there's no point for praying. Please, you have to be prayerful. No, 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 no. Fasting. Please, you have to fast. Well, there are some things that cannot go without prayer and what? And fasting. 
Don't say, ah, Bible study. At least God is good. If I don't come to Bible study, God, no, come. Because that is the one that will lead you to heaven, that will keep you on the right course, and that will make you to go to heaven. And I pray that will be our portion in Jesus' name. When the sons of life comes, it's in that we use his goodness to storm the storms. Come to us and I pray. The hand of God is goodness. We stop every storm coming into our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. We can take our situation to the Lord. Because He is the only one that is good to us. And He will continue to be good to us in Jesus' name. Amen. The third one, through God's Son, Jesus. Colossians 1.15 tells us something. He reminds us that Jesus Christ is the image, express image of God. We can't see God. You're like Philip. Philip asked him, we don't know. We don't know Father. I say, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So he came. And the fullness of God dwelt in him. Therefore, when we are talking about the goodness of God, the goodness of God is in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the express image of goodness of God. So anyone that is in Christ has now appropriate the goodness of God unto himself or herself. And I pray that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans 5, 8. God proves that he loves us while even we were sinners. Christ died for us. So that death of Christ among Calvary he saw this put a picture of a merited goodness of God for him to have gone to die for us and that for us it shows that God had a merited goodness for us and let me tell you Romans 8 32 if God did not spare his only son he gave him to us the scriptures say why do you think that he will not give us all other things? Everything. So, if he has given Jesus Christ to us, the first one, all other things that we needed for our lives to survive, God has given them to us in Christ Jesus. And I pray that we be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. So, when we talk about good gifts, it comes from Jesus Christ. <laughs> we know 2 Corinthians 1.20. Yes. The every one of God's promises is yes in Christ. So when you have Christ, the promises of God in Christ, then it's going to be us, and that goodness is part of it. And that will be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Then what is our response quickly to God's goodness? There are very specific steps. The first one is to repent of unbelief and ingratitude. We do that most of the times. Romans 2 4. The goodness of God leadeth into repentance. Yes. Don't think that you are so nice that God has put you on his list. Of those that you send the goodness to. You know what we do? God, at least you know me. I come to a choir. You know me. I am a pastor. You know me. I am a prayer warrior. Then I deserve all the good things you have been giving to me. No, no, no. That is not true. That is not true. Do you know what we are trying to do? We are trying to only be interested in the gift and not the giver. When we are claiming that, God, I pray it very well. No, it's for you to say, Lord, I have to repent. Not that I am nice. Not that I am good. It's by your goodness. It's by your mercy. Then we have to quickly come to him. Otherwise, ingratitude is a great sin which we have to be very careful. Everything we do, we must say, oh Lord, I thank you. So what we need to do is to stop. Look around. See all the 
the things God has done in our lives. And then we turn to Him. Not only taking Him the gifts that He's given us, but to take Him as well to come and dwell in our heart. And I pray that will be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Rest in His goodness. That's the second one. When adversity comes, this one, uh, I know many of you will say, How can I rest in His goodness? When adversity comes, we all know Romans 8 28. All things work together for good to them that love God and that have called by His purpose, for His purpose. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Unpleasant things would come to any child of God. The death of pleasant things or the unpleasant situation could be a disguise to God's goodness in our lives. After I finished my university education, I was to go and serve. They couldn't find my call-up letter. I said, God, after suffering for five years, hoping that after five years I will be enjoying myself, at least I will have freedom. And not only be drinking what they call Gerem Sof, it is a green from Kassara. We do that. And we were doing that in those days. But I cannot be drinking milk and uh, other things. But now, the where is the call of letter? <laughs> so for six months, I couldn't move an inch. You have graduated. People will be wondering, what are you doing at home? Don't you go for your own service car? So they said they are going to apply for another one. They applied for another one. It came. So that one posted me to the southern part of Nigeria. The first one, as soon as they got the second one, they found the first one. Ah. <laughs> the first one was to go to the northern part of Nigeria. So I said, now, I want to know the reason why the first one was not given to me. And while I was here for six months, so I took the one for the other part, and I went to the other part. So I got there. Those people there in that village, they caused some people there some fanatics, Alimanjari. They were more terrible than Boko Haram's. More terrible. They were young, young, young people. Elementary, you can't say 40, 30, no. 20, 25, 18. And the people in the city told me, if you had been here six months ago, they would have killed you. They killed all the coppers. I said, hey, this is goodness of God. This is goodness of God. I thought it was a very setback for me. It wasn't. So my brethren in the Lord, you might be going through certain experience, certain trials. It's not a setback. It's part of the agenda of goodness of God in your life. And by the time it comes out finally, <laughs> you will now say, God, you are so good to me. The Lord will continue to be good to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We know Job. He went through a lot of trials. Joseph, with good dreams, went through a lot of trials. But what happened at the end? Job was given double. Double restoration is coming to you in Jesus' name. Joseph was elevated from prison yard to become prime minister to palace. Your divine elevation is locating you in the name of Jesus. So we can see all those experiences. So don't think that what I am going through, God, I, I am doubting you if you are good. So among believers, whenever I'm discussing with them, they say, where is that God when my father died? Where is that God when my mother, when their mother had cancer? I say, God is still good. God is still good. There was someone who said, oh, please, can I, let us go and visit my friend. He does me today. Go to the friend, to the friend. So this brother put a trust there. He said, okay, I will be praying for you. 
Then that friend of us said, What do you mean by praying for me? Where was God? When I was cutting tree, and the tree fell on me, and I broke my ribs, and I broke my limbs. The brother said that for you to even be talking now. I don't think that is goodness of God. If it were not God, do you think that you'd be talking? You would have died. So the brother said, ah, It is true. So when we go through certain trials, it is part of that package of goodness of God to us. And I pray that the Lord will open our eyes and see his goodness in that our trials in the name of Jesus. Amen. The last one is step out in faith and see God as a perfect role model. Step out in faith. The first thing we have to do is to believe that God is good. As soon as we believe that, we have that God is good. I think the whole other things have been sorted out. Let us have it inside our spirit. Day that God is good. Even when that situation is calling us to be crying or whatever, we say, God, I know you are good. Shall continue to follow us 
all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. So my brethren and the Lord, our God is God. Everything he does is good. And he wants us to be good as well. We have had the proofs that he is good. So our goal, I want you to take it this week, that I want to show goodness to someone this week. If you can do that, then you can. You will now see how the goodness of the Lord will overwhelm your lives. So just determine your heart that this way, I want to be good. I want to show goodness to someone. It's not only money. If it is to him, if it is to do one thing or the other, I want to show goodness to someone. Just like David said, Is there anyone left in the house of Saul for the sake of Jonathan so that they can have favor? And my four blessings came up. Still in your heart. This way, I'm going to be good to someone so that the goodness of the Lord will overwhelm my life. And I pray that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we answer that face quickly? If the next five minutes, we are going to sing. Please. Yes. Are you ready to dance? Yes. Yes, that's how I Instrumentalist, yes. Lord, you are so good. Oh, you don't know that. Blessed be your name. Oh, yes. God, you are so good. Blessed be your name. I want you to dance right away. Yeah, 
good to me. You are the one that has been keeping me healthy. You are good to me. Regarding my academics, you are good to me. Regarding my job, my career, you are good to me. Regarding my marital life, you are good to me. Regarding my business, you are good to me. Regarding my children, you are good to me. Regarding my job, you are good to me. Regarding my spouse, you are good to me. Talk to me. This room, this room, this room. Talk to me. Talk to me. You are good. In all the areas of our life, in our business, you are good. You are good to us. Hallelujah. Oh, in Jesus' name, we are praying. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shall we shall the grace together? Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Love of God. Sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You are with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I am a woman, Jesus Christ, who is in me, is greater than he that is in the world. Amen. This is what the Lord is saying. Someone has got a case. That case has been lingering on for quite some time. The supernatural solution of the Lord has come upon that case and you are to be favored in the name of Jesus. Amen. That is what the Lord is saying. That case has been long for quite some time. But God has come down to put a finishing hand, which is going to suppress you. That is what the Lord is saying. It's going to suppress you. You wonder, so this is how this case will end. That is what the Lord is saying. The Spirit of the living God is going to suppress you and you'll be wondering, so this is how this case will end. It's going to end in your favor in Jesus' name. Shall we shout seven? Jericho is right now. Hallelujah. Shall we start?